Welcome, everybody, to the Playing On Podcast. My name is Carl Markowski, and it's nice, bright, and early uh, coffee. Mm, 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 mm. Paintball breakfast. Oh, yeah. Hashtag paintball breakfast. Uh, welcome to the Playing On Podcast, episode number two. Uh, as I told you guys, this was going to be a QA. and I was going to answer some questions that you guys submitted. Thank you for doing that. Really appreciate it. And... Um, you know, it's going to be a cool one. It's going to be good. It's going to be awesome. So let's, uh, without further ado, let's head into uh, thanking a few people like our sponsors. Midwest Clothing. I've had the privilege of working with these guys since last year, and I've enjoyed every minute of it. Midwest Clothing is truly a players come first company and are very proud of what they do. With an assortment of headbands, shirts, and hoodies, head wraps, and more, Midwest Clothing provides everything you need to look good on and off the field. A great company with great products starts at the core, and these boys from Minnesota are doing everything right. Take a look for yourself at MidwestClothing.com and tell them that Carl from the Playing On Podcast sent you. Uh, also brought to you by Vantrition. Vantrition. Uh Proudly made in Ohio, Vantrition is a company that makes a variety of supplemental products for the true athlete. From proteins to recovery blends, Vantrition gives you what you need to help push yourself and achieve your goals. I enjoy the paintball preload, <coughs> excuse me, as it sets up my body for to fire on all cylinders. Uh, if you demand nothing but the best, head over to Vantrition.com for all of your sport supplement needs. Uh, and last but not least, we are sponsored by Planet Eclipse, uh, makers of the most elite tournament gear on the market. With marker choices like the LV1, CS1, and the new GTEC 160R, you can't go wrong. Planet may be known for their stellar products, but what they're also known for is their outstanding customer service. Keeping you in mind, Planet Eclipse makes choosing the right paintball equipment for you fast and easy. Just head over to PlanetEclipse.com to browse the latest in high-end markers and soft goods. With teams like Aftershock, Impact, and Dynasty, all shooting Planet Eclipse, excellent is a must. Work hard, play hard with Planet Eclipse. Booyah. So, uh, thank you to all of our sponsors. Uh, They are doing a great job of putting great product out there. Keep it up. All right, guys, without further ado, here's Q&A. All right, all right, all right. <coughs> uh, excuse me, didn't mean to cough in your ear holes. Jeez. Uh, hang on. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. All righty, guys. Thank you again for everybody who submitted questions. Uh, I'm sorry if I butcher your names, and I'm sorry if I don't make eye contact with the camera because I'm filming this one, but it's hard to read when there's a camera and I got to read stuff. So, hiya. Uh, here we go. Let's uh, let's get into it. David CF uh, from Costa Rica asks, how do you play the snake? Do you rather go straight to the 50 and gain terrain or maybe pushing a slow pace and picking up players while pushing. Um, It it all depends on the field for me. If, uh, if it's a fast field, then obviously you want to get down the field and, uh, and shoot some guys in the back and the pack and, you know, make some quick points of it. But uh, if it's a slower segmented snake where you got some gaps everywhere, you kind of want to, uh, you know, play as it, play it as it comes. So it it really all is, uh, is field, dependent so uh yeah if it's if it's quick field and it's a connected snake usually you want to head down go down but uh but if you got to work your way through you kind of want to take your time but you know there's always openings and you want to do uh whatever the game plan calls for and for whatever the field calls for uh he also asked how many times during the month do you go to the field to practice and are there any tips on how to shoot while playing the snake in the prone position. Uh, during a month, I like to go, you know, at least once or twice. It's kind of, it's kind of hard right now because uh, the fields are so far away, um, and it's it's winter time. But uh, 
you know, as far as tips on how to shoot while playing the snake, it's all about core strength. Uh, if you look at any of the great uh, snake players, uh, you know, Fedorov, Chad George, um, you know, any any of those guys are in really, really good shape. They have a really solid core and base. Uh, that way you can be on your knees, you can move around where you need to, and, uh, you know, it, it's like you're snap shooting on your feet. That's almost the strength that you want from your core is uh, you want to be able to move in any position that you can while you're on your feet, on your knees. Uh, and that's that's really my best advice is just, uh, you know, make sure your core is strong and, and uh, the rest will come. <clears throat> Thank you, David. Um, this next one is uh, T-Nux off of, off of Instagram. He says, what is it that you like so much? about the LV1. Uh, you know what? I've I've shot I've shot an Ego ever since that planet ever since planet came out with the uh, the Ego. I've I've shot one and I've just been a huge huge fan. Uh, just the way they feel, the way they the way they shoot, how smooth they are and the LV1 is just accentuates all of those into one package. And I remember shooting one for the first time, and I thought it was just, it was the greatest thing since sliced bread. Uh, and I'm not just saying that because I'm sponsored by them. Uh, I'm, I'm a true, true fan of Planet Eclipse and uh, and the LV-1. Um, that's why I'm going to shoot one this year. Uh, the LVR, actually. But, you know, I'm just, a, I'm just a huge fan. It's a preference thing, and I feel that that marker brings out the best of my shooting abilities and uh and i choose to shoot it so uh thank you tnux next question comes from damn channel um he says i know as a professional this question does not apply to you as much but for divisional players it might why do you think the nxl holds an event in las vegas during a holiday weekend when the flights are peaking as a divisional team the funding for our flights comes from our pockets as of right now and it's just not feasible for everyone to afford 500 to 800 dollars on a flight from one event yeah it sucks um especially when playing the rest of the nxl events on top of the fox ball league um you know i like to say there's a reason behind everything but <coughs> excuse me um yeah, I don't know why they're doing it. I, I think there's, uh, you know, and even Halloween. Halloween is my favorite holiday, but they kind of pushed uh, World Cup away from that. But I'm assuming it's maybe venue biased. I, I don't know. Uh, maybe that's the only time slot that they could get in Las Vegas at that time. Uh, you know, but that's not really, I mean, that sucks. The, you know, the flights are really expensive. Um, but, uh I don't know why they would do that on on a holiday weekend. I don't know what holiday is that St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, but I don't know why they do it. That it really does suck. Um, hopefully, there is a a decent reasoning behind it. Uh, thank you, Damn Channel. Um, next question is from Amar Terry. Amar Terry. Amar Terry. God, I'm butchering these names. Um says, hey, Carl, I was wondering what the roster situation is going to look like for Aftershock. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. We, we should be putting something out soon. Uh, you know, I like I told everybody, actually yesterday, uh, we picked up Danny Tiljack. That's a for sure thing. Um, dude has great paintball knowledge that he's been playing forever. Uh, great teammate. I played with him when I was on uh, St. Louis, Av Louis Avalanche. And he is just, he's solid. He played for Dynasty. He was a killer on that team. Played for Vicious, was a killer on that team. And I cannot think of any negative things besides, you know, if him and I ever got into an argument, he could smash my head into a million pieces. <laughs> uh, Danny's a great guy, and I, I'm really excited to have him on the team. And all the new guys I'm really excited to have on the team. And uh, It's, it's going to be a new adventure, and, you know, Every year seems to always be a new adventure because things are always changing. Th new things are always happening, and I, uh, you know, this is going to be a new challenge, and I cannot wait to uh, to take it on. So, 
So just keep an eye out. You know, look on our Facebook page. Look on uh, Chicago Aftershocks Instagram. I'm sure we're going to be coming out with something very, very soon. Uh, the Beninator, Bentonator. Uh, he says, how long have you been playing professionally and how long have you been on Aftershock? Uh, professionally, I've been playing since 2004. Um, I started off, I actually went professional with uh, Tim and Effect. Uh, we played seven man, pro seven man. We didn't do that well, but we did uh, We did not bad for what, uh, what we had to work with. Um, but I've been playing with Aftershock Besides 2015, I've been playing with them since two, half of 2013, uh, 2014, and uh, and last year, and uh, now this year. So you know, and, and I plan on retiring from AfterShock, and hopefully that's not for another few years down the road. But uh, but you know, I've I, I really want to see this program succeed, and I really want to see them do well. I, w I really want to see us do well. Uh, and uh, you know, I just don't want to. I don't want to see the name die. And you know, it's it's a it's a shame that the performances that that we've had. But you know, with with new faces and new talent comes a uh, new opportunity. So uh, it's it's definitely going to be an interesting year. I'm very excited about it, and uh, I can't wait to uh, to help the new guys and help this new team uh, become one and start kicking ass. So uh, thank you, Bentonator. Uh, I think it's Loner, L-O-N-E-R, NorCal, Loner NorCal, Nor NorCal, sorry if I butchered that one too, uh, he says, what is your take on releasing layouts the day before the event, what do you perceive was the reasoning behind the PSP supporting this idea and the NXL deciding not to go that route, uh, with the complaint that pre-release layouts favor teams with more practice availability, i.e. not Aftershock, um, wouldn't this be better for the league in terms of competitiveness? I think that's a great idea, holding out layouts until you get there and you go, oh, hey, there's a layout, because uh, honestly, paintball is, is paintball. Um, if you can't get on the field, obviously that sucks if other teams are doing it, but you know, as long as you play paintball and you play as a team, you'll be able to adapt to whatever you need to. But I think it would be a great idea to to not have the layouts until you get there but the, what sucks is that someone will always have it and I there's always someone on the inside there's always a way for someone to get the layout um, it always seems to not be us in many cases but uh, you know I just think that that would be a great idea be, because there's there's really no way that anyone, anyone can have an advantage besides just playing more paintball, period, but throwing on top of that, if someone had the layout and they've been playing it for weeks, you know, it, it does suck, but, um, you know, it is what it is, and I hope one day they actually go to that, but, uh, but for now, we'll just have to, uh, you know, cross our fingers. Uh, thank you, Loner. God, I hope it's Loner. <laughs> uh, Christy Kowski, he asks, what, th what are your thoughts, or I'm sorry, what thoughts are going through your head as you are on the field from when you hear the 10 seconds before the buzzer? Uh, really, I'm just focusing on, on my job. And, you know, I go out there, you know, I, I kind of, you know, go through my head of what I, what I need to do. I kind of take a peek down at the other side of the field, see who's down there, see what they're what their squad is like as far as uh, positional. You know, if I can go out there and I see, you know, a certain guy lined up a certain way, I go, okay, he, more than likely he's going to go far. Uh, this is who I'm, I'm heading up against. And, uh, you know, if, if you know the players that you're playing against, you can kind of, uh, you know, learn their tendencies and maybe have a little bit of an advantage. But, I mean, for the most part, though I go out there and my head is, uh, is pretty clear and I'm just – you know, trying to focus on the moment, and uh, when the when the buzzer goes, you know, it's just all adrenaline rush and teamwork and doing my job. So thank you for the qu the question, Kristikowski. A little Polishness in there. Um, next question is from Fallen Chaos Paintball. 
and they ask, how did you get into playing paintball and how did you end up playing pro? Uh, I was actually, uh, I, I started out playing with a, a good buddy of mine in Ohio and he, him and his dad actually played and they asked me one weekend to go play and I had no idea what it was. I was playing football, baseball at the time, so I was, I was big into those and he, he said, hey man, come play, come play paintball. So eventually he, he got me out there and I was hooked ever since and that was 2001 something like that around 2001 and um, you know there was a paintball field that I started refing at uh, that field hosted a team called Tipman Effect I eventually got on that team and the 2004 season we actually went pro in um, in seven man NPPL seven man and that is actually how I started my my pro career was uh, with tip and effect and then uh, and then it's it's uh, kind of just grew from there so thank you for the thank you for the question fallen chaos paintball all right this next one is uh, this next question is from Weston legacy paintball and they ask with all the roster changes you mentioned having to work on chemistry again how do you guys approach this and how do you plan on improving communication on the field uh, you know you know, just like every year, there's always roster additions or losses, and in this case, we have a whole rebuild. Um, so how you go about it is you just practice and be together, even on and off the field, as much as possible. Uh, get that camaraderie going, and you know, y you need to you need to get the gel going. You need to get that trust because that's the huge thing. Is on the paintball field is you have to be able to trust the guy either in front of you or behind you and if you don't do that then you're you know you're gonna be shit out of luck because you're gonna be on your own a lot especially if they don't trust you so building up that that trust base and the um, the belief in that you're go you're the guy next to you the guy behind you the guy in front of you whatever uh, the guys on the other side of the field are gonna do their job you have to have that trust uh, to be successful. I mean, that's why all the great teams are who they are is because they all believe in one another and they believe that they could win together. So uh, it, it is definitely getting that trust down. Uh, as far as improving communication, playing a bunch together. Uh, the more you can learn your own players' tendencies, your teammates' tendencies, uh, you can kind of know when they're going to move. You can, you can, you know, and even watch whenever you're not playing, even at practice when you're not playing watch your your teammates and you know give them advice have let them give you advice uh, you know always take criticism whether it be you know good or bad uh, I guarantee you if it's your teammates hopefully it's all good criticism uh, positive criticism so uh, you know it's just being able to to trust each other and uh, be, being able to talk it out see what you guys need to do to uh, to make it work uh, thanks for the question Le legacy PB uh, let's see, Bernie from Mexico City, he says, he asks, uh, in your, in your perspective, what is Impact doing to dominate all the other teams? Uh, you know, what I think they're doing is they have a roster right now of guys that all, like I said earlier, uh, 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 that all believe in each other and they all believe they can win and they have 110% confidence in the team, in the players, in the coaches, in the, in, you know, in the program. And once you have that and all guys are firing on all cylinders and you, you have that camaraderie and that teamwork, it is a very, very hard thing to stop. Uh, and, and that's what we are trying to work on as Aftershock too. So... Um, I, I think that's what they're doing. They're playing a lot of paintball. They're hanging out together. They're being a a team. And uh, you know, once you have you know a solid you know a solid uh, connection like that, it's it's hard to break. Um, so thank you, Bernie, for for that question. And let's see. Uh, last but not least, Mr. James Blackwell. He asks. Uh, I know your wife, Tiffany, is 100% supportive of your paintball career, but how has having a family now impacted on you leaving for practices and for tournaments? 
Uh, yeah, my wife and family are, you know, 100% behind me on, on what I do. Um, but it has impacted how much I leave. You know, I, I'm missing important moments with, uh, with my son as he's growing up, with my family. I've missed, I don't know, countless, you know, birthdays and, and weddings and, you know, all these other events just to try and pursue what, uh, what my dream is, you know, and, uh, and it, I don't want to say it's affected it in a negative way, but there's, there's things that you miss that you can't get back. And it's really tough trying to justify missing those things when your team's not playing well or you're not playing well and you go to a tournament or a practice and, and you don't have a good practice or you don't have a t- good tournament and you get back home and, you know, your kid's walking or he's, you know, there's always, you know, different ways to, uh, you know, video chat and, and FaceTiming and all that. But, you know, it, it's not the same, but those those sacrifices suck, but it, it's all in wanting to be the best. And, um, you know, that's that's what I'm trying to do. And, and you know, my wife, hi, Tiff, love you. But, uh, you know, she's she's very supportive in what I do and uh, what I'm trying to pursue. And and I know she uh, she understands that, but it's it is tough. It is it is very tough, but um, you know it's just paintball is a part of me. Um, but family does you know family does come first, and uh, you know if if anything major happens, you know of course I'm going to you know stay home and and be there for my family. But, uh, but but paintball is a part of me, and it's it's a it's a big part of me. So, um, but yeah, <coughs> excuse me. Thank thank you everybody for for all of your questions. I really appreciate it. Uh, you know, I, I had a good time. I, I hope to do this again uh, further into the season, uh, doing the whole questions thing because I know I'm sure more will pop up as uh, as soon as I'm doing more. I plan on doing more podcasts at at. Uh, doing some at practices with some of the guys. I have Mike Bruno lined up for a podcast, uh, Renig Miller, multiple guys from the team, and then at tournaments, you know, I plan on doing a bunch. So uh, so there's going to be a ton more content coming your guys' way. And, you know, I'm, I'm super excited about it. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes. Uh, head over and like my Facebook page, uh, Carl Microwave Markowski. Head over and follow me on Instagram, cmarkizzle. And also on uh, YouTube, Carl Markowski. Uh, you can find me on there. Just oh, hitting shit. Type in my name; it'll pop up. Uh, but yeah, subscribe, like, share, um, and uh, and we can keep this thing going. Again, a big thank you to uh, Midwest Clothing, custom products, amazing guys, amazing company. Uh, they can uh, they. <clears throat> Excuse me. They have all kinds of programs too to help uh, sponsor uh, teams and and get uh, get you guys' name out there. So check out Midwest Clothing, MidwestClothing.com. Uh, actually, I think it's MidwestClothingLLC.com. Uh, sorry guys, but yeah, I think it's uh, MidwestClothingLLC.com. Also, Vantrition, uh, sports supplements made in Ohio. Uh, I've been using the stuff for almost, uh, you know, I think a little over half a year now, um, and I and I love the stuff. It's it's great. the The paintball preload, you know, I usually take some of that before a uh, practice or a game, and then the recovery I take uh, about an hour afterwards. And then whenever I work out, I usually take the the, the four plate protein. So head over to vantrition.com to check out all of their uh, all of their supplements. And a big thank you to Planet Eclipse, um, and y'all, y'all know who they are. They are the makers of uh, the best paintball markers on the planet, uh, like this guy right here, little LVR action. But uh, but head over to PlanetEclipse.com, <coughs> excuse me, to view all of their uh, all of their markers, all of their soft goods. Uh, great company, huge amount of support for the players. And uh, and any kind of concern you guys have uh, with anything, they hands down are the best at uh, handling customer service and um, 
and services. So, excuse me, Jizo Pizza. Man, this coffee made me a little gassy in coffee. Coffee, coffee. <laughs> But yeah, thanks guys for tuning in to the Playing On podcast. Uh, We'll have more out soon, but don't forget to subscribe. See you guys.